Here I have a part drawn with two different features that we're going to utilize grooving toolpaths for. This back feature here is a basic groove with 90 degree parallel walls. This feature here, however, we're also going to consider a groove. It has a sloped wall and a small feature on the floor here. This part is drawn as a solid, but I'm going to use wireframe geometry for toolpath purposes. In my levels manager, turn on my wireframe, turn off my solid, and go to top view. And we can see the profile of each of those grooves. I'm also going to go into my stock setup and turn on my left stock, my chuck, and shade the boundaries. So this is what I'm going to be working with. The first groove that we'll work on will be this more complex groove here. I'm going to start by going under Toolpaths and select Lathe Groove. I'm prompted now to select the geometry for this grooving toolpath. Now since this groove can't be defined by any combination of the three points, and I have wireframe geometry to work with, I'm going to select Chain, OK, and then return to my graphics window to select my driving geometry. Start here and finish over here. Select OK, and then I need to select a tool for this grooving op, a library tool, and let's try this eighth inch grooving tool right here. And then we have three other tabs here for this grooving toolpath. This first one, this groove shape parameters, I'm not going to use any of these settings here since our groove is being defined by our chain geometry. These options here are if we didn't have any geometry on the screen. However, I'm going to rough the groove and I'm going to finish the groove. So here I have rough the groove turned on. I have clearance of a hundred thousandths of an inch. And I'm going to keep it away from the stock here. Start my feed move about twenty-five thousandths before. And I'm going to leave five thousandths in X and five thousandths in Z for a finish pass. Here I can select how this groove is cut. Right now it's set to cut bidirectional, meaning it starts in the center and plunges alternatingly on either side. I can have it cut positive, negative, or the direction of the chain. Let's have it cut bidirectional. And then I'm going to have the walls of this groove. Instead of steps, I'm going to have it be smooth here. This will allow for a little bit more consistent tool loading on my finish pass, in which we go into the groove finish parameters tab here and I have finish groove toggled on. Now we're going to make one finish pass with zero stock to leave in X and Z. However, I need to add some overlap here. Now this is how much the tool overlaps from the cuts from either side of the finishing operation. Let's give it 75 thousandths from the first corner and another 75 thousandths between passes. Click OK and then backplot this toolpath. We can see here's our first plunge move. And the tool is cutting bidirectional, meaning it's cutting from either side of our initial plunge. And then the finish pass plunges in, up and over, and out. Let's now take a look at some of the finer points of grooving toolpaths and adjust some parameters. Go into the parameters and the rough parameters here. Now with pec grooving, what this is, is the tool plunges in in various pecs eliminating the long stringy chips that can be created in one long plunge move. So right now the pack is set to 50 thousandths. Let's set this to 25 thousandths. And it's only going to peck on the first plunge move. And I'm also going to turn dwell on for two revolutions of the spindle. 
click OK, OK, regenerate, and then let's back plot and take a look at this pecking action. So we can see the tool is plunging in and pausing every 25 thousandths thus breaking the long chip that will be created with one long plunge motion. After that initial peck, the tool resumes a regular plunging motion with no pecking. Another option that we can take a look at is depth cuts. I'm going to leave pecking on, but turn on depth cuts. Now I can either have this set to the number of passes depth cuts or the amount of depth as a measured value. Let's just have it set to two depth cut passes and it'll zigzag between those depths. Click OK, OK, and then regenerate. And if we backplot that toolpath now, we can see there's our pecking motion again, and it's only going down half the distance of the groove for this first pass of the roughing operation. Then it goes down and cuts to the full depth of the groove for our roughing op here. And then comes in and does the finish pass. So there's some very powerful features for adjusting how these grooves are roughed with peck and depth cuts.